Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you are well. Today I'm fulfilling my promise of starting a series of book reviews. Today's book is the very first one in that series. I must say that this is an excellent first book to review since it's going to set a benchmark for the rest of my reviews. Now, the book that we're going to take a look at is Rope Works Plus. This is a book by Gerald L. Findlay. The book has a predecessor called Rope Works, so without the plus. This book is an upgrade and an updated version of that book. So do pay attention that if you're going to get this book, get the plus version. It is in most aspects superior. I learned about this book when I was doing research on Japanese lashings. This book contains several variants as well as other techniques, some of them less common and a bit more exotic. All in all, it has a nice mix of commonly used techniques and knots, and some less commonly used. So first off, the general styling of the book is very eye-pleasing. So we have the basic information, plus a bit of eye candy, in this reef knot with whipped ends and a few flat knots for decorations. The backside is decent as well with a small description and some nice looking knots as well. The first important part of my review is a look at the contents section. This part of the review is going to help us determine who is going to benefit from this book the most. Now the book has several chapters, with the first one being the largest one. This one deals with knots and hitches. So let's take a look at the more notable knots and techniques in this part of the book. So we have whipping, we have seizing, we have the figure eight knot, the square knot, sheet bend, bowline, sheep shank, clove hitch, constrictor knot, then we have the transom knot, Lark's head, slip knot, Turk's head, monkey's paw, also called a monkey's fist knot, and then a various assortment of other knots. Then the next section is on splicing. Here we have several different splices with the three most commonly used ones and the most important ones covered. So we have the back splice, the eye splice and the short splice. Then we have a section on lashings where we have several different types of lashings. So we have square lashings, the diagonal lashings, we have shear lashings, tripod lashings, round lashings, floor lashings, ladder lashings, and so on. Now, after this section, the rest are fairly small and less important. We have one on netting, one on rope making, and making a geared rope machine. And finally, we have a small section on making various tools and camp equipment. 
For example, this one on the camp stool is quite interesting. So this is the contents section of this book. Now let's try to evaluate who is going to benefit from it. So judging by the contents section, who is going to benefit from this book? In my opinion, there are three major uses for a book on knots and working with rope. These are for camping, scouting, wilderness survival and bushcraft. So this is one use for a knot book. Then for sailing and manipulating rope for nautical use. And finally, for decorative purposes. Now, for wilderness survival, camping, bushcraft, things like that, this book is excellent. Now, it doesn't cover every single technique that could be useful, but it covers the basics very well. As such, I think that the majority of the techniques in this book will benefit those kind of activities. Now, for nautical use, for sailing and things like that, the book has some things to offer, but it also lacks some. So, for example, we don't have the long splice, we don't have any detailed instructions for working with rope on a boat. Still, it is pretty decent. Now, for decorative use, this book is lacking. You don't have many stopper knots, you're lacking decorative knots, Turks head knots, braids, a lot of things that a decorative knot book would have. So this is the basic consideration that you should make when getting this book. The second important part of a knot book is the presentation of the material within. Here we have illustrations or text. Now as far as the illustrations go, these are some of the best I have seen in any knot book. So we have our rope clearly shown. We have the descriptions of what is going on in the image, plus the objects interacting with rope are also clearly depicted. So a few more examples. Here, here, and here. Let's take a look at a few more techniques. Here is one on the sliding eye splice. Just beautiful, in my opinion. And one on lashing. Again, you can clearly see what's going on. So the illustrations are excellent. What about the text? So here is an example of a technique presented in the book in text form. So you have the title or the name of the technique, you have a description, you have its uses, comment on the technique, you have other names for this technique, which is very useful, plus narration in a step-by-step -step manner. So all in all, besides excellent illustrations, you also get very nice text descriptions. Now one thing that I do miss is some background or backstory on the various techniques, but well, if you consider this book an instructions manual, then you can clearly see why the author left it out. You want the basic information and you want it fast and efficiently stated. So, the presentation of this book is excellent. Both the text and the visuals. 
Now, how does the Ashley's Book of Knots compare to this book? Now, the Ashley's Book of Knots is considered the most comprehensive book on working with rope and knots. This book, in comparison, is a lot less comprehensive. It is more focused on a narrow field of bushcraft, survival, camping, scouting, and some nautical use. So, this book is more limited as far as content goes. But, the content that it does show, it shows excellent. It has excellent illustrations and written narration. Now, this book, in my opinion, is more of an instructions book, while the Ashley's Book of Knots is more of a reference book. This is why this one covers techniques in a lot more detail, while the Ashley's Book of Knots tries to cram as many in as possible. The ideal middle ground would be to have the Ashley's Book of Knots as far as the content goes, but the illustrations and narration of this book. Now, the product would probably be way too long, since the descriptions and illustrations in this book are very detailed. So, the Ashley's Book of Knots in that case would be 3, 5 or even 10 times as long. All in all, the Ashley's Book of Knots is an excellent book, and this one is an excellent book as well. So who is going to find this book the most useful? In my opinion, those into scouting, camping, bushcraft, wilderness survival, for those kinds of application, this book is excellent. It shows everything clearly and effectively. In fact, I'm going to use this book to teach my kids the various aspects of working with rope. It is very clear, so kids can benefit from it as well. For nautical application, for example for sailing, this book is useful. It is lacking in some areas, but it has a lot of important techniques as well. For decorative work, I would not recommend this book. Although it has a lot of techniques covered, there are very few decorative knots. So guys, that's it for my review of this book. If you were expecting more, you were probably sorely disappointed. I don't talk too much, I think, I try to focus on the important aspects, so no chit-chat and a short review. I recommend this book, it is an excellent one to get. Now, in a sudden twist of events, a giveaway for my patrons. As I've promised, in my announcement of this book review series, a part of my book review is also going to be a giveaway. In this part, I'm going to give away one copy of the book that I'm reviewing to one of my patrons. So one of the people supporting my channel on Patreon. This time, the chances for winning this book were quite high. The winner was Alan. So I'm going to contact you in order to get the shipping information for this book. If Alan will not respond, I'm going to send out this book to another fellow patron. All in all, what I did was I took a list of my patrons, I put the number into a random number generator and got a number. So this time it was Ellen. For all of the people supporting the channel, either on Patreon or in any other way, thank you very much. It really means a lot. 
So guys, that's it for this book review. I sincerely thank you for joining me in this video and I hope to see you next time as well.